Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try to fix these 10 robotic vacuum cleaners that I got in a job lot. So I bought them from eBay or from the same seller and I had to pay £165.52p. So it was actually an auction, so we were bidding on them. Very little information on them. A few pictures, but the, the pictures there are not off this actual job lot. They had a few job lots for sale. So uh, it just says here, this listing is for 10 times mixed UFI robot vacuum cleaners damaged for parts. And it says it doesn't come with any accessories and it says not fully tested. And in this instance, I definitely believe it because one by one, I've charged them all up. Most of them were completely dead and they take a good six hours to charge. I've had this now sitting here for the last uh, couple of weeks or so. But every one of them fully charges and every one of them does keep the power in there. So if I turn them all, all on now, they will try to do something. But there is faults with some of them. I think there's about four of them that are faulty. So already it's a bit of a winner as far as the job lot is concerned, especially this one here. If you look at this one, this one is a different model than all the others. All the others, there's 911S, and this one is a 15C, and this one is actually brand new. I've had this in operation work around my house, that's why it's dusty. It connects to Wi-Fi fine, it does everything that it's supposed to do. The drop sensors work so it doesn't fall downstairs, it, and it was immaculate. There was not one bit of dust on this whatsoever. And this one is one of the better ones, so this is like, uh, at this moment in time, as of the filming, this is one of the more expensive ones. It's actually quite powerful. The only thing it's missing is the brushes here, but they just clip on and off. So the rest of them are model number 11S. So what I think's happened here is they were probably all 40, because otherwise why would the customer send it back? Unless, of course, they just lied because maybe they didn't like it, maybe they didn't think it was as good as they thought it was going to be. But what it could be is... Remember, there's more to this than just the actual cleaner part itself. They also should have a dock with them and a power supply. And the idea is, when the robot starts cleaning, it's all automated. It will drive itself back up to here, and then it will start charging, ready to go off again the next day, or however long you set it. Once a week, once a day, twice a day, whatever you set it to do. So there could be instances where... The cleaner itself is okay, but maybe the power supply's failed. Maybe the dock's not working, or maybe these are particularly dirty, and then it's not docking anymore, it's not charging, because these have to contact onto the metal things on the bottom here. So if this was particularly dirty, it wouldn't work. A lot of people would just think it's a natural fault, and then they would send it back. So most of them are actually working, but there is some that are not, so let's take them over one by one over to the blue map, and let's see if we can get all 10 working by the end. Okay, so let's get started on this one. So basically, none of them came with any docks or chargers, so I have had to buy them separately, and annoyingly, I spent more on them than I did on the actual vacuum cleaners, but that's demand and supply. There's nobody really selling them when you look on eBay. So I'll do the total costings at the very end so you can see what I paid per unit and what I think they might be worth. So with this one here, and it goes without saying that all of them need a massively good clean. There's one of them that stinks of damp dogs. So it says here, main brush not turning. So if you look at this one, can you see there, there's no, that shouldn't be spinning like that. That's basically just freely spinning. So from looking at the other one, there is a motor in here that deals with that. So I'm thinking this is just gonna be a broken belt. So what I'm gonna do is, I have bought spares, but they're just spares, that, like the brushes and stuff like that. But what I might have to do is I might have to sacrifice one of these to use for spares to fix the other one up. So let's take that out there now. Let's take that out here. Right, and I can see massive wear on that there. And I'm not sure if there's wear on that in there or not. Because, but this should be, uh, can you see it's gone from a square to like a circle? And that should be a clean square, but it looks a little bit, looks a little bit rounded. So I don't know whether now that's because this is maybe, maybe this, do you know what probably happened? This probably got blocked up and that kept on spinning. So let's put a new head in there and see what's happening. Now I've got some just generic Chinese ones and then I've also got the proper Yuffi spares as well. So I'll start with these ones. See, that's what it should look like. Can you see a nice square? And if these don't fit right, then I can always go and use the proper ones. Let's see if that's going to fit in here. Yes, it is. Yeah, right. Okay, so I think that has to be the world's easiest fix. 
No, it's not going to work upside down. Let's just see if it does it for a second or two. No. All right, I'm going to have to just feed it with my hands. Yeah, I can feel it turning. All right, ready? There. Yeah, it's just seen it for a second. In fact, I can bring the camera down, can't I? There you go. You can see that that's spinning there. them's going to need a massive clean but this is actually the one that smells of uh, damp dogs so I've already roughly cleaned this out by just tipping it out in the bin but for this particular one I am going to change the filter on it so it would be a good idea to actually wear gloves Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a quick wash in the sink just to get rid of all that smell and everything from it. I'm going to throw that away and put a complete new filter and also wash that and then dry that up. Nice and clean, but what I did notice when I was cleaning it, it's all scratched here. And more importantly, look, this is the third wheel at the back. So this has two big wheels at the front and then it drags along just a little small wheel at the back. And if you have a look, it's completely worn down as if it's like being used on concrete. And then this wheel must have got blocked up with hair and stuff, stops spinning and then friction has just worn it down. Look at that. It's completely worn away. That is, used to be round, look. So this is what it should be like. Now annoyingly, I don't know if you'd be able to get spares for that or not. So it might look that just because that little part's gone, it might, might have to replace the whole sort of bin side of it. But still, I won't worry about it just yet. I can uh, see how I get on with the others because if one's not fixable, I can just use the collection bin from that one there. So uh, yeah, the smell from this is gone now. Let's pop a nice new filter in here. There we go, so hopefully now it should smell better. Looks like that one's going to be okay. Let's move on to the next one and then at the very end I can give everything a clean and uh, set them all off just to show you them working. With this one I've put noisy left brush feels loose. So let's turn it on. Can you hear that? There you go. So there's like a grating noise on it. And I've just noticed as well that the chrome little insert around here is missing as well. So if you have a look, this one here, this is what it should be like. Resistance all the way round, yeah? But look at this, can you hear? It's sick, it's spinning and then uh, look. It gives, it goes and then gives. So something isn't gripping properly. So let's get this thing apart and then we can see what these, these are. Let's just make sure it's nothing to do with the actual brush itself. You can see here as well, it's just lack of maintenance because these need to be taken off every so often and getting rid of all the hairs and stuff. I'm just gonna swap that around to this side here just in case. No, it's still skipping. All right, let's get this thing apart. to say what these things are worth. So brand new, they cost around about £200. Some of the models are a little bit over. Used working ones are around about £100 or a little bit over. And then uh, used ones, it just depends. I mean, the one I bought, which was water damaged, I paid 50, 50 something pound for it. But remember, these didn't come with any accessories or the dock or the charger. But considering I paid £16, whatever it was, £16.50 each for them, you can see that 
this part alone was pretty good value. But then for the docks, I had to pay, I think it was £215, but I do all the sums at the end for 10 of them. So they were working out to be like £21.50 each, which is a shame that you have to pay more for them. I thought I would have been able to get the docks very cheaply. Right, now that we've undone all the screws and took away this bottom off the bumper thing at the front, the top should come off. There we go, now we've got to be careful because there's a, a few little connectors, so let's just undo that and undo this one. There you go, you can see what a clean it all needs. Right, so it's this one here which is playing up, which is this motor here. So let's undo the motor and let's see how we can actually get to it. Oh, we're going to have to actually dismantle quite a lot more of this than I thought because I have to take apart this thing here to actually get to the, uh, the gear in for the brush. Okay, let's take it out. Take the motherboard completely out. So that then unhooks. You can see various sensors and stuff at the side. Right, that gives us access to the other scr two screws now. Right, so the very fact it's kind of giving says to me that there's no belt in this. I think that it's going to be teeth, and I bet some of the plastic teeth have gone. Right, let's zoom in a bit and have a look. I'm just going to give it a quick clean because it's very dusty and I don't want all that dust to uh, go inside it. Right, let's open it up and see what we got. Right, here we go. I can see, I can see a broken tooth. Yeah, it's a hard bit of plastic there. So yeah, one of the teeth have broken. Let's see, you wouldn't think one tooth would make such a big difference. Let's see where the breaks come from. Ah, look at this one here. Can you see they're crushed? So some are good and then some are crushed. Like look here, crushed there, so good, crushed. Good. A Little bit crushed here. Maybe I could just push them all back out again. I wonder whether that would whether that would work. That gear looks perfect there. And that gear looks fine, and that's definitely look, that's spinning lovely. Yeah, so it's definitely this last gear here. Look. Oh there, there, there's the broken tooth. There. Okay. So, I suppose, let's have a look, with one broken tooth, is that why it's crushing the other ones? Let's have a look, so it gets to here. Yeah, it's skipping there, isn't it? Look. I mean, I could try, I could try to straighten them up. I have got a bag of gears, but do you know what? I'm not going to have one of those gears because look, it's beveled. I'm definitely not going to have one of them. Can you see the the way it's the way it is down the bottom? So this is straight, but look at the way that is. It's all at an angle to meet that one there. Uh, so I think it's going to have to be a case of annoyingly buying a spare or using one of my vacuum cleaners as a donor for the others. Maybe I should leave this one until the end because is, is there any point? Even if I straightened these up, remember this probably it probably got jammed, broke that one, and since then I reckon these have been flattening after that. Don't really want to waste much time on this one if it's not fixable. 
I'm just going to quickly try to straighten them out just to see if it makes any difference or not. Oh, well, it definitely is much better, but it will still need replacing. But that is, uh, yeah, that's working much better than it was. It doesn't seem to be skipping now, but it's still noisy. I'm going to give it another go. Right, well it's much better than it was, but it's still far from perfect and I think the same thing's going to happen again as soon as the brush gets caught in anything, I think it's just going to start to rip the gears. So I'm going to have a look on eBay and see if anybody's selling replacement ones, just to see how much they are. I'm not going to put this one back together just yet because I'm going to see if there's another one that maybe I can't fix, if it's unrepairable for whatever reason, then I can just take the motor from that one or the gear from that one. It's on eBay and there's sellers selling them for 15 UK pounds. So it is possible that's the whole unit here and you can see how easy it would be to replace. So I'm gonna see how I get on with the other ones and then I can make my mind up whether I wanna spend the 15 pound on this one or whether I wanna part out one of the other ones. Because remember now, on that first one we did, it's got a broken wheel at the back. So by the time I was to buy a new bin, and one of these, it might start to add up. It might make more financial sense just to use one for spares to fix everything else. Let's get on with the next one. Now, I've got this one down as very noisy. And if you have a listen, listen to how bad it is. So it sounds, uh, it's, I mean, it's working okay, but that's not, that doesn't sound right. But these things moving okay. I think, I wonder whether it's a problem with the brush. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's take this out. And then if we take this out, and then we'll know whether it's that that's rotating, or whether it's uh, the actual motor, or whether it's something else. They go quiet. Yeah, so I'm thinking that this one is just going to need a brush. So let's get another brush. I mean, this looks okay. Yeah, that sounds fine, unless it's something to do with friction. Let's just try that one more time now that I've taken it out. No, that's definitely not right. Let me get another brush. Uh, so, let's open this up. Let's take that out. Right, now let's see if it makes the noise. No, so just a faulty brush. There must be something that's off balance or something on this uh, on this brush here. Or unless it's particularly stiff in here. I wonder whether an oil would sort that out. I'm just gonna spray some WD-40 in there, just out of curiosity. Right, so as far as I can see, that's the only bit that, uh, that moves, because this spins with the actual, you know, the motor part itself. Just spraying this is just silicon one. I want to see if that's made any difference at all.
Yeah, sounds better. Not perfect, but definitely sounds better. Can we give it another spray? Right, I know what's wrong with it and there's no point in spraying. So if you have a look, when I zoom right in here, this is the old one. Basically, there's a lot of wear on here. You can see that it's worn around this bit here. So when it goes in here, what should happen is this bit here shouldn't move. This should say stationary and then this should move. But if I zoom right in, you can actually see, especially if I shine a light on it. That look, can you see the whole thing's turning? Yeah. So basically it's plastic against plastic there, which is not good. Now when I put the new brush in, because it's a tighter fit, look, and that's what it should be like. So the noise I'm hearing is basically the plastic rubbing against the plastic here. So that can't be repaired. I'm going to throw that one. Well, I suppose it could be repaired if you were to pop this off and stuff, but it's not worth it given that these are a replaceable part and you can get them for a few pounds. So there you go. That is that one working there. So now... That out of this job lot is actually the ones with the faults, but what I have to do is I will have to just replace the missing MOSFET. So let me get the one with the MOSFET that I took to get another one working, and uh, then everything just needs to be really massively cleaned up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the price of these and then make my mind up whether it's worth fixing as in buying replacements or just using one for a donor because it's handy to have, I'm gonna be keeping a couple of these, it's handy to have a donor in the house so when other things go faulty, if for example one gets water damage in the future, it's nice to have spare components that you can swap things around with. So I'm gonna take this apart now so I can get the new MOSFET in. MOSFET that I need to replace so I took it off from here so I bought myself a pack of them four of them I think only cost I think it was about two or three pound wasn't it expensive let's take one out and let's pop it in right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some solder braid solder wick and I'm going to take off the old unleaded solder and then I'm going to put fresh leaded solder on there and then I'm going to use hot air to put this on. I'm not going to take the board out. I'm going to make sure the hot air is not going anywhere near these connectors. And the battery is taken out from the back here. So I'm not going to melt anything. Also, there's an air gap under here as well. So I won't need a huge amount of heat, especially if I'm using uh, leaded solder. This is only a thin board. So I'm very confident I'm not going to burn or damage anything else in the process. So I'm going to put some flux on it. the temperature to 480 degrees Celsius because uh, my iron's struggling a little bit on this big ground pad here or the heat pad whatever it is heat sink there you go that's nice and clean now so now I'll put some leaded solder on it There we go. Now let's put the component on and we're going to use some hot air. I've got the hot air set to 400 degrees Celsius and I'm going to go 3 out of 8 with the airflow. And I'm just going to check that these are reading the same as the other ones. So this is an FR9024N which is the same as that, FR9024N. Just going to put a little bit of fresh flux on that. All right, that looks about right there. Now remember, I'm gonna angle the heat away from these connectors.
Right, I can see the solder's gone shiny now. So hopefully. There we go, you can see it dancing. There we go. So I'm happy now that that is in its place. Right, so I just want to make sure that it's fully down on that pad there. So what I'm going to do is everything's still really hot. I'm just going to put pressure down and now I'm going to heat it up again. And this time hopefully I won't have the shakes as it melts. Right, so it's gone shiny again now. So now I know it's fully pushed down. Take the heat away. And now that I've got my hand nice and steady resting, it means it's not shaking all over the place. There we go, and the solder's gone a slightly drier colour now. So that's it, now I'm just going to use some IPA when it's cooled down a bit. That's isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. .9%, and that will be job done. That's the stuff I'm using. And this will get rid of all that sticky flux. Now. now the reason it kind of looks sticky and stuff is because this has a slight little bit of waterproofing on it called conformal coating. So what I'm going to do is I did actually buy some conformal coating spray. So I'm going to spray a little area here just because the IPA would have just removed a bit around here and also then it gives a bit of protection that's a component. Because the problem with these are they are quite likely to actually get water damage because what happens is that sometimes they grab onto a lead. You're supposed to keep all leads and stuff off the floor and you know cables and stuff and uh, they can grab onto a lead and then you see they start dragging it and then if that is like gets wrapped around a table little side table or something then it can end up pulling the table or if it's pulling the lead it can pull a lamp and then that could knock a glass of water or coffee or something like that off the table onto the actual item itself so let's get that spray Right, this is the stuff I'm going to be using. There we go, so now I'm just going to let that dry. Right, so while I'm waiting for the conformal coating spray to dry, I'm going to have a look at this and see if there's anything I can do. Because basically I can buy the whole dustbin here, but they're £18, which seems a lot of money when all I need is just a tiny little bit of plastic on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this thing comes out and then I'm going to see if there's any way maybe I could... There we go, it does come out. Yeah, so it's just on a little axle. I'm going to see if there's anything I can do with this to either... I mean, if I had a 3D printer, I could just print one. I have got a 3D pen. Maybe I could make something out of a pen. Or I'm wondering if there's something else I could use and then I could grind it down into that shape because basically this doesn't get used that often it's just when it it's normally on the wheels but then sometimes it will kind of rock forward and back so obviously it needs it needs this to be able to turn otherwise it's just going to constantly get scraped like that which isn't a, a good look and could also possibly damage your floor if you had maybe like nice wooden flooring or something like that so I'm just going to have a think about what I can do here Right, I've been looking around the old toy box and I found this old broken plane. This would be something that you get from the pound shop along with a load of other toys just in a bag. So real cheap quality. But look, it's got wheels on it. And what I'm thinking is, if I was to put those two wheels facing each other and then make the little hole in the middle bigger to get the axle through, because the axle on the original plane was very small, like that, then I think that that will fit in the middle there and I think that will actually look quite professional when it's in and I, because it's such a, a tight fit with ways I wouldn't actually need to glue them together at all I think it will work all right so I'm just going to widen out these holes going through just a little bit too thick when they go on there they look good it's just that there's uh, it doesn't spin as freely as it should so I'm just using a little bit of sandpaper or wet and dry paper and I'm just going to take a little bit fraction of a millimeter off the width Okay, so that's it done now, and uh, there's no, not much friction on that at all. If anything, I took a little bit too much off the width when I was sanding it down. But 
that's uh, that's working well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, obviously, it doesn't look as good as the proper one, but who's going to be looking underneath it anyway? And it saves having to spend eighteen pounds, and more importantly, it saves having to throw something away that is easily repairable just for the sake of a lump of plastic. So uh, yeah, so what I have to do now is basically just clean every single one of them. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to clean one and then it's just going to take me ages going through every single one and, and doing that, but I don't need to film that part. Each of them I'm going to be taking out the dust collector here and I'm going to be giving all that a good clean and changing out the filters if necessary. I'm going to be pulling off each of these, so with these you just grab them and yank them off and I'm going to make sure that there's no hair or anything caught around the motors because it does collect around there. I'm going to do that on both of them. This one you just unclip like that and then you can just take that out and give all that a good clean around the place. If the brush is particularly worn I can replace that. I'm going to be cleaning up the wheels, I'm going to be cleaning up the whole body itself, just giving it a nice clean, getting rid of all the grime. I'm going to be taking this one out if it needs cleaning. Yeah. If not, I can just clean in in there or use tweezers just to uh, get all the hairs and stuff out. And this wheel at the front should pop out as well. So let's see how easy this is going to be to pop out. Well, that's actually quite hard to pop out. Let me get some pliers. It's because you can see all the hair builds up around the edge here. I'll show you when it comes out. Right, okay, so you just need to use a bit of brute strength to get that out, but look at that. Look how much hair gets clogged around there. Yeah, and again, if too much hair gets clogged around there, that's not going to spin freely. And then, once it's cleaned, you can just clip it back in, like that. And you can see it will spin everywhere. So, it's going to be a boring job, but it needs to be done. So, I'm going to get a move on with that. Well, I've made up my mind because this is the only thing I need to buy. I am going to spend £15 on buying a replacement one of these. But just for the finish off the video, I am going to put it back in here because I want to have all 10 of them working together, just all bumping into each other and stuff in the kitchen. So I will be putting this in, but once the new replacement arrives, then I can put it in. I think it's worth spending £15 to get this one fully working. So let's get this back together. few things on the inside because you didn't really get a chance to see much of it because all of these are working so well. But basically we have various sensors, you can see here, two at the front here. We've also got uh, this spring here, this helps to bump a bump back outwards. We have a little switch here and a switch here. So if these sensors don't see what's in front of it, like a chair leg, then as soon as the bumper hits this it will go back in the opposite direction. We also have more sensors here and here. I'm not sure if these are the drop sensors or not, I don't know. We got two brushes here and they're fed by individual motors. We also have an individual motor for each wheel which is on a little spring so it can go up and down different bumps. We have a motor for the brush, the rotating brush and we also have a fan here for suction to suck up the dirt as well. So uh, yeah, quite a few different sensors you can see as well here. There's ones at the back here and also here as well. Right, so that's it, let's uh, get it back together. back together now and it's less noisy than it was before it's still I can still hear it clicking so I'm definitely going to get the replacement motor but check it out it seems to be working pretty well so you can see both of them spinning but you can hear it clicking there it goes just under the uh, setting so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the one with the conformer coating on because that should be dry by now and then I'm going to put that one back together 
so you can see it stops before it gets to something. But then if you take it by surprise and just hit it there, you see it will go a different way. Just want to quickly show you the drop sensor in action. So you can see the stairs here. When I press this, it will only go so far before it stops. Yeah, it's quite clever, isn't it? There you go. Right, let's get more cleaned up. I'm still cleaning, this is taking forever. So I've scrubbed all of these in the bath, I took all the filters out, I've replaced where necessary, and I've cleaned all the inside of every single one of them, so now they're all there, uh, they're all nice and clean. So hopefully they won't be producing any smells. Now I've just got to carry on cleaning the actual vacuum cleaners themselves. So here we have it all finished and they've all come up nice and clean. The good thing about the covers on these ones are that because they're like shiny plastic, they do really come up clean when you give them a, a clean. The problem with it is they're a fingerprint magnet and all you've got to do is just lift them up and that fingerprint will just stay on there for like forever. So now I'm going to set them all up at once, all 10 of them. And I've got a nice little array of obstacles here. We've got some pepper, we've got some wet carrot, carrot peelings, I've got rice krispies, little bits of tissue paper scattered around the place. So let's see how it copes with these obstacles and let's see how it copes with each other. So I'm going to turn them all on and then we'll set them off one by one. Right, here we go. My little army of robot vacuum cleaners. And the good thing is, if YouTube doesn't work out for me, it's all right, because I might go into the cleaning business. Imagine turning up at someone's house with all these and just let them loose for an hour. Right, here we go. Let's go. Go, go, go. They're off, they're all off. Come on, do the cleaning. Some of them have gone off in this direction. Look at that. An organised mess. I'll tell you what, they seem to be cleaning up. I'm just going to close the other door. See if it gets the wet carrot. Yes, it got the wet carrot. Go on, go on, go on. Here we go. Rice Krispies, no match for the Hoover. Come on. Or the vacuum cleaner, I should say. Let's see if it's... Uh, floor coverage. So you don't need to get special ones that map the house, all you need to do is buy 10 of them. I feel like I'm getting attacked. They back me into a corner. There we go, they're back over there again. Right, I'm just going to fast forward through this to give it another two minutes and let's see if it's managed to clean everything up. So let's see what job they've done. Well, do you know what? Not too bad. There's a, a Rice Krispie left here. Let's get that over into the middle. On. And it did actually manage to get the wet carrots. They did hang around for the longest, but uh, yeah, that is it. Now you might be wondering what I'm going to do with these. Well, I'm going to keep a couple of them for myself. I've already got a few people that want them, so I'm going to give them uh, give them away. And I might even keep a couple for projects because think about it: two motors, sensors, everything like that. I wonder if you could kind of add other things to it to make something that's maybe not a vacuum cleaner. So some sort of like robotic toy or something like that. So uh, I think it's well worth the money. Let me just tell you what I paid for these. Right, so there you go. And it totals £415.52. And there's 10 of them, so that works out to be £41.55 each. Which, do you know what, isn't too bad. Would you make any real money on it? Well, it took me a long time to uh, clean up and by the time I have to pay for PayPal, eBay and postage, you're not going to make a huge amount of money. 
But I suppose as far as job lots are concerned, these were probably one of their better lot because most of them were working. As far as I'm concerned, for the YouTube video, they've been a letdown because really there was very little wrong with them. But still a little bit of learning was done, so now if you've got one of these and you find that it's getting noisier and noisier, the chances are it's just going to be a faulty brush. So uh, yeah, that's it. And also, it's quite nice when they tickle your feet with the little brushes. Yeah. Right, so that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.